winter RV camping. And today, I'm going to share my winter RV camping tips. Because once you see how easy cold weather camping in an RV is, you might just get hooked like I am. Hi Weekend Warrior family, or if you're new here, I'm Randy. And every Thursday, I share tips to help us make every moment count because weekends are just too short. There are so many reasons that you might enjoy winter RV camping like I do. Besides all the fun, I normally have the whole campground to myself. Oh, and year-round camping means more camping time for us. I'm gonna talk about water, staying warm, condensation, and so much more. And it's not glamorous, but I'm also gonna talk about using the bathroom. <gasps> Plus, one thing I haven't figured out yet, and I'm hoping maybe you can help me. We've got a lot of information to cover, but first I wanted to let you know that I'll be sharing some of the products I use to make RV winter camping easier for me. And I'll leave links to these products in the video description below if you wanna learn more. I live in Minnesota, so of course I winterize my RV before the temperatures get below freezing. When temperatures reach 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below, it's important that you do have your RV winterized to prevent cold weather damage because when water freezes, the ice can cause cracks in your tank, water lines, and water heater, which can lead to costly repairs. There are a couple different ways to winterize an RV, and I use antifreeze to winterize mine. Basically, winterizing an RV includes draining your tanks and water lines and then adding antifreeze into your water system. If you'd like to learn how I winterize my Little Guy Max trailer, I did a video with step-by-step -step instructions, and I'll leave a link to that video in the video description below. Once the RV has been winterized, no water can be put in the tanks or the pipes. So what does this mean for winter camping when your RV has been winterized? You can't fill up your RV water tanks, so you need to bring water with you. I do use bottled water for convenience sometimes, but I also fill up collapsible water containers to bring water with me. You cannot fill your kitchen sink with water, of course, because then it will drain into your lines. So instead of doing dishes, I use recyclable plates and silverware. I love using recyclable products whenever possible. If you do wanna do dishes, <laughs> no problem. Use a collapsible tub, along with a biodegradable soap that works good in either hot or cold water. This soap does it all, and it's practical for washing dishes and other things, no matter what season it is. Of course, when you have cold weather and your RV has been winterized, you can't use your RV bathroom. What I use for a bathroom isn't glamorous, but it works. And I use the double duty toilet waste bags. It's two bags in one, with the exterior Ziploc bag adding a second layer of durability. Then I place the bag into this very fancy Reliance portable toilet, which basically is a tub with a pail, seat, and a cover. For extra absorption, I used to add kitty litter to the bag. But because of a comment I received from a viewer, I now use pellets. They are recyclable and compositable. Thank you for this great tip, Melanie. You guys rock, and I love hearing your tips and tricks, so keep sharing them with me. The portable toilet is then placed and used in the bathroom. If using a portable toilet isn't your thing, don't let this stop you from RV winter camping. Find a campground that has an open bathroom. Bathhouses will be closed because of freezing pipes, but most will have a vaulted toilet that can be used. Condensation is an important thing to consider when RV winter camping. Here's why. Condensation happens when vapor and warm air, like the inside of your RV, encounters a cold surface like the walls. And this can cause things to get wet and damp. And when RV camping in cold temperatures, this is exactly what happens. My bedding along the side of the walls gets very damp. And when things are damp or wet, in the dark and without airflow, mold can grow. And mold is really hard to remove and it can cause havoc on our health. Before installing the Frilly system, my RV mattress sat on this hard wood surface. And this was a problem because air was unable to move underneath the mattress. This damp, dark area with no airflow is an ideal breeding ground for mold and mildew. So to combat this issue, I installed the Froley Sleep System. And this system allows airflow underneath my RV mattress. Not only does it provide me peace of mind, it's a spring system that helps me get a better night's sleep. I say it converted my RV mattress into a five-star-like hotel bed. 
I love my Proly sleep system. And I did a complete video with a lot more details and I'll leave a link to that video right up here in the video description below if you want to learn more. Plus, as an affiliate, they've given me a discount code that'll save you 15%. All that information will be in the video description below. You should be aware that some RV batteries don't work very well in cold temperatures, and freezing temperatures can ruin some. And when they do work, cold temperatures can cause RV batteries to drain much quicker. And I'm currently trying to figure things out with my RV battery because it hasn't been holding a charge very well, even before the winter season. I'm not 100% sure what the problem is, but I do know I need to replace it. So I'm currently on the hunt for a new battery. Because I often winter and summer camp without electric hookups, I want a battery that will work well in hot and cold temperatures. In Minnesota, our winters can get really cold, and in summer, it can get really hot too. Weather is really important, but I also want a battery that has a a lot of power so that I can stay out a day or two longer while boondocking. I'm not an RV battery expert by any means. In fact, the research I've done has been a little overwhelming. Some of you have reached out to me before with your suggestions when I've mentioned this problem before, and I thank you for that. I'm seeking any RV battery advice that you might have that might help me make a wise purchase decision. Please share your thoughts and tips with me in the video description below. This will help me and others that are looking for cold weather RV battery solutions. What I have been doing in the meantime is using a trickle charger to help me maintain my RV battery. This has become really handy because of course the battery always seems to completely lose its charge in the middle of the night and it gives off a siren warning which isn't very pleasant to be woken up to in the middle of the night. A trickle charger is a great way to maintain an RV battery charge when necessary. The furnace in My Little Guy Max uses propane and this keeps me nice and toasty warm. While winter camping in your RV, you will definitely use more propane than you normally would. So be prepared for that. How fast you will burn through propane depends on the size of your RV, the temperature you set your furnace at, and how cold it is outside. When I have electric hookups, I will use an electric heater to save on propane costs. Next, let's talk about keeping your body warm when you're outdoor and in cold temperatures. Because after all, you go winter camping to enjoy the outdoors. There are two essential things for staying warm. First is layering, and I wear a lot of layers. And Cuddle Duds is my favorite clothing for layering in winter months. Secondly, wool is your best friend. I layer up in wool tops, bottoms, and wear wool socks. Wool socks keep my feet warm while outdoors, but also help keep them warm on the cold floors. Princey also has a nice warm coat to keep her nice and toasty warm out in the cold weather. There's so many activities that can be done when you're winter camping in your RV and you're dressed appropriately. You might be surprised, but most of the activities you do when you're summer camping, you can also do when winter camping. Some of my favorites are... to learn more about winter RV camping, I've created a winter RV camping video playlist that contains more in-depth videos about the portable toilet that I use, as well as step-by-step -step instructions to how I de-winterize and winterize my Little Guy Max trailer. I'll leave a link to that video playlist right up here and in the video description below, so be sure to watch that next. Well, that's it for this episode, and I can't wait to see you next Thursday.